we're absolutely delighted that we've been nominated for the Green Gown Award. Uh, the dye gardens that we have at Mayor Street are a key part of the work that we're doing in the college to support sustainability and really involve our students and our staff in the work in that area. Uh, we set up the Centre for Sustainable Fashion some years ago and what's very exciting now is not only the work that we're doing in terms of research and work with industry but now more and more of our students and staff are building this sort of practice into the curriculum and, in, and into their work. Um, and this, this is lovely. You just, you just pick them up. Yeah, I would just pick the leaves and they pull really easily. So we got to a certain stage three years ago where we were talking to the college and I'd been to see the MA in Fashion and Environment and um, from just talking to a group of them there were a couple of students who were really really interested in um, growing natural dyes. Well I didn't know, I knew about growing plants but I didn't know about anything about dyeing so mainly there was one student called Liz Spencer who's from the States who um, knew a lot about dyeing but not much about growing and vice versa. So we kind of collaborated not only in building the bed itself but also we, we sort of, there was a kind of exchange, a sort of um, cross fertilisation of ideas and, and knowledge. So and now this year after, this is our third year, I've been running dye workshops and Liz back in New York has been growing, growing dye plants on her, you know, in, in Brooklyn, so we've kind of spread out, or spread our knowledge, which is which is quite amazing, really. Uh, probably, uh, morning glory seedheads. So hopefully we'll have more morning glory next year. The natural dyes are a fantastic resource for us. It's incredibly important that students understand the difference between natural dyes and chemical dyes. And by having the plant dyes here, students can get deeply involved in the root of where those colours come from and the possibility of the colour and the subtlety of the colour. So um, that's a, a real plus for us and a real benefit in education terms. Right. Um... So well, I do BA was, uh, Bespoke Tailoring um, in London College of Fashion and I got involved in the dye bed because of um, the workshop that uh, Kate Poland hold, um, held in, I think that was back in uh, October. So we started doing some samples and I got really interested in it. She was teaching me how to steam stuff and how to dye stuff with tea and brass and all that, which I had never come across. Right now I'm doing my final collection and I would like to relate it to sustainability. Um, I'm dyeing all my linings with um, meadow, uh, with tea and rust, and uh, other flowers like hollyhocks and wold. Um, I dyed some stuff with uh, onion skins as well. Um, so I'm experimenting with different styles because with natural dyes, the thing is, the colour never comes out as what you expect it. So, so I have to experiment a lot in order to get I the never right colour. Quite how well it's going to work. Plum leaves, I didn't think. I everyone said I'd get a pale colour. I can't believe that I got a sort of orangey brown. I was already very interested in natural dyes, and it was something I wanted to continue. And part of the reason for actually doing the course was because there was a natural dye bed. So when, as soon as I arrived, Susan put me in touch with Liz, who started them and worked really, really hard. And she put me through all the beds and spent loads of time really explaining to me what, what was going on in the beds, what was growing, how to dye with them. She gave me so much information. We take colour for granted as fashion students. We just expect to have bright reds or yellows or oranges. We, we can go to a shop and have any colour we want and don't think about the consequences of those colours. We wanted to sort of go back to, to our history as well, because I find that really interesting. This is part of our, you know, woad, for example, which is an ugly sort of, <laughs> ugly plant, which is really smelly when you process it, is, a, is an important part of our cultural history. You know, we've been growing it in this country for hundreds of years. And madder, another sort of straggly plant is, is you'll see in Turkish or Persian carpets which are a thousand years old that the colour is there, you know, it's a really deep part of our culture. Like that and just put the pegs in straight oh, that see. way or you, just, could, just, 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 just. Yeah, or you could do a bit of um, folding to it yeah. first okay. and then the pegs can go over it <coughs> like And to do, way. to dye something um, <laughs> synthetically sort of divorces you from, from your history 
and as well as the environment. And you know, we, we know about denim jeans and indigo, but you know, we used woad to get that colour. And, and um, I think I mean, that's the thing I find really fascinating. It's a sort of thread, if you don't mind <laughs> the pun, uh, that, that binds us to our, our past. We were invited to sh um, create an artisan's retreat at the uh, Chelsea Flower Show. I believe we were the only, or well, the first um, higher education institution ever to show there. Um, and what we, what the reason we were asked was actually because of the print, uh, the print dye beds that we had created. So Chelsea wanted us to recreate those print dye beds um, to demonstrate actually the uh, curation and print and dying, and dying process, um, which we did, and it was uh, normally successful. Well, I think in order to expand the natural dye bed, we need more students to get involved. And to be honest, um, when I was presenting my, my um, ideas with natural dyes and all that to my whole class and to my tutors, they were rather impressed because they had never they didn't. They had seen stuff done before, but they never thought that students alone could handle it themselves individually. And so I'm learning all the time about how you can, from a nettle, you can get thread and you can get colour and you can eat it and the bees like it. You know, so it's it's learning about the sort of power of, of the plants around us. And I really think, <laughs> I really think, young people and old people should should be more aware of that because otherwise we're just going to industrialise ourselves into, into nothing. <laughs>